Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The next step is for you to prepare the statement of equivalent unit, cost per unit and evaluation. As we mentioned earlier, we are using the weighted average method. So, you just copy whatever that you have on the credit side of your account. In your account, you have JP1, JP2 and BP1. That is your finished goods or your output. So, total that up, that gives you uh 2450 you can just put straight away the finished goods here later on and only you split into the three products okay you have the finished goods they are all 100% complete so uh put that 2450 for each of the column for your closing wip depends on the percentage given in the question okay and then for your normal loss and abnormal gain they are all 100% complete so that gives you the equivalent unit Remember that abnormal gain you have to minus because it abnormal gain is a debit item. Okay, so you have the equivalent units here. Then work out the cost. So okay, work out the cost. You will have your opening work in progress because you are using the weighted average methods. You are going to find the average cost. So that's why you have to add the opening work in progress here. So if you see from the opening work in progress, the value for each of the element of cost is 2818, 2850, 1526 and 1911. Then just put in the values there in your statement. And then you can total that up. So that total will also give you 9105 that you transfer to your account here. And then you have the cost incurred during the period. You can take from the question or uh, here in your account. Okay, you can uh, take the value from the question or you can take from your account. This one, you are being given the information about 15,000, 11,000, 9,000 and 10,000. So, you can put there the cost incurred during the period. And then, just total that up. That will give you your total cost. To work out the CPU, you just take the total cost divided by your equivalent unit. For example, to work out the uh, equivalent unit for the, uh, the, sorry, the CPU for the input material, that will be 17818 divided by 3020. You've got 5 ringgit and 90 cent. So you, you can do for the rest of the column. Here will be 13850 divided by 2770. So that will give you 5 ringgit as the CPU and so on. Then you total up your CPU, so that will give you 19 ringgit in total. The third part of the statement is for you to do the evaluation. For the evaluation, you just copy whatever that you have in the output column. And then uh, this one, you have the uh, four items. So put there four items here. And then you can just work out the column by column. But for example, if that item is 100% complete, for example, in this case, your finished good is 100% complete. Then you can straight away take 2450 times your 19. Rather, uh, that is your total CPU rather than you do it column by column. So you will get a value of 46550. And then for closing WIP, if the percentage of completion is different, then you have to do it one by one. And then for your normal loss and abnormal Law, uh, ab, sorry, your normal loss and abnormal gain because they are all 100% complete then you can straight away take as the quantity times the CPU CPU is 19 ringgit in total so you can work out the normal loss and your abnormal gain in terms of the uh, value here okay uh, same as before for the closing WIP you can straight away transfer to your process account so here you know that the closing WIP value is 6225 so you put there the value of your closing WIP you can straight away transfer to your process account the same goes to your abnormal gain so your abnormal gain you can straight away transfer to your process account so now you have two more boxes that you need to fill up. That is your JP1 and JP2, your joint product. So here, I want to add another step that you need to do. That is step number four. After your evaluation, then you have to prepare the total joint cost to, to be apportioned. If you can still remember, you have the total joint cost that you need to apportion uh, for this one to work out how much is the value of the joint cost or the common cost that you need to apportion. So in this case, you will start off with your finished goods here and then 
your finished goods from the statement and then as usual you have to adjust for your normal loss absorb so here you have your normal loss 1710 and then minus whatever value that you have here in this case your value of normal loss is zero so you minus zero so you will get 1710 as well so from here you will need to uh, to deduct your byproduct value uh, so in this case your byproduct value from the question you have already worked out as two four five just now so then only you've got your joint cost to be apportioned okay that, that is the total joint cost to be apportioned for eight zero one five if you remember previously i've already mentioned that your total joint cost here not uh, less your normal loss scrap value uh, and then less your byproduct revenue, then you will get your joint cost to be apportioned to the joint product. In in our particular question, Petunas Berhad just now, our normal loss scrap value is zero. Okay, your your scrap value is zero here. So you you minus zero, and then you minus again your byproduct value. So your uh, your byproduct value is two four five. What I want to highlight here is your byproduct here. So you have another line that you need to minus that is your byproduct value of 245 okay and then you've got the total joint cost to be apportioned okay once you determine the total joint cost that you need to apportion that is 48015 you need to determine the basis in the question you are being told that the the apportionment is based on the sorry Okay, in the question, you are being, being told that the apportionment is based on the net realizable value. Okay, so you have to find out how much is the NRV. So in this case, you apportion based on the NRV. Hopefully, you still remember how to work out the NRV. So NRV is the sales final sales value minus your further processing cost. So from the question, we already know that that is your output and that is the selling price given in the question. Okay, given that the selling price is seven ringgit for JP one and nine ringgit for JP two, so you will have here uh, seven ringgit and nine ringgit as the selling price. So you can work out how much is the sales value just that just take the quantity or the output times with the selling price per unit so you will get your sales value there given further processing cost there is uh, no any further processing cost for jp1 but you have the further processing cost of 2080 for jp2 so therefore you can work out uh, for the nrv so nrv for jp1 will be 9520 and the NRV for your JP2 is 7100. And then this is the total. Then you, if you can still remember that we have uh, what we have done just now before to ask about the apportionment of joint cost. So to apportion your joint cost, you will take the ratio of the NRV. So your joint cost that you want to apportion is 481, uh, 48015. So 48015, you have to uh, uh, times with the ratio of JP for JP1 based on the NRV. So NRV for JP1 is 9520 over 16620. Okay, so you take the ratio of JP1 that is 9520 divided by the total of your NRV times with the total joint cost that you want to add portion that is 48015. So you've got 27503. You can just round off the figures and then you do the same thing for your jp2 that is 7100 over the total uh, that is the nrv for jp2 divided by the total nrv 16620 and then uh, times with the total cost that you want to add portion that is 48015 so you've got a total cost of 48015. Now we have a portion to JP1 and JP2. So from here, you can transfer to your process account. So from here, you can then transfer to your process account. So you can transfer to process account 27503 for JP1. So you put there 27503 and for JP2 the value is 20512 so that goes to your process account 
So that finishes of your process account and your process account should be balanced. Okay, hopefully you'll get a better understanding on how to prepare for the joint product and byproduct. Okay, in terms of the statement, it depends on the question, just that now I've just added this one, the joint product and the byproduct that you have. Okay, for the method, depends on the question. For the OIP treatment, it's either you can use FIFO methods or weighted average method. Just follow the things that you have learned before. So it depends on the information given in the question. Okay, uh, uh, with that, I thank you. Hopefully, you have a better understanding on this. So that's basically uh, wrap up or finishes the syllabus for the process costing. So thank you very much.